Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a bunch of polish work on the hands and the limb placement. This time around we're just iterating. We're going to leave it at this after this week. We're going to focus on the hands of the player next week. And then the week after that I think we're going to work on some basic gameplay mechanics like dying and reloading and killing the enemies. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off you'll notice that we went ahead and added a head IK as well as a head marker container and head target object. And this is just to facilitate the head looking. So let's go ahead and implement that first. So we're going to start out in the limb placement controller. We're going to go ahead and make a couple changes. All right. And we're going to start off with the skeleton IK 3D for the head IK solver, as well as going ahead and getting in the head target container node 3D. Now we do need to go ahead and create a new float for the head rotation lerp speed and that's going to function almost identical to the torso rotation lerp speed but we do need to separate it out so that that way we have different variables for each. Now down here in the ready function there was something I realized later on that the hands and legs of multiple AI at the same time would end up synced due to them all starting at the zero index on the limbs. So I decided to go ahead and randomize those. So we go ahead and take the current limb step delay timer, which is between zero and the minimum limb step delay. And so we go ahead and get a random within range of those two locations. And then we do the same thing with the current limb index with the current limb start count minus one. That way we just get a random starting point. And also at the same time, we can go ahead and start the head IK solver. Now down here in the physics process, we're going to go ahead and create a new function because I don't want to touch what's already there. The new function is going to be called update head position. And we're going to call that exactly like we do with the update body positions. But we can go ahead and modify that here. And first off, we're going to go ahead and set the head target container's global position to the global position of the chest target container. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a vector 3. This is going to be the target look at point. And first off, we're going to check to see if the player target is not null. And if it's not, we're just going to use that. But if it is, we're going to go ahead and use the chest target container plus last velocity. This is just going to kind of give us a vector that looks out in front of us. And then for the actual rotation, we're going to do much the same as we did up here in the update body positions where we use the looking at function to create a new transform. It's going to be looking at the target look at point with the up vector being a little bit more complicated. So the up vector is going to be first off checking to see if the difference, the dot product between the up axis on the chest target container and the vector that we're looking at is greater than 0 0.99 in the absolute. So this means that it's either looking directly up or directly down in relation to the chest target. And if it is, then we're just going to use vector 3 dot up. If it's not, we're going to go ahead and use the chest target container up. This is just going to go ahead and guess an up vector that is generally consistent. Following this, we can go ahead and set the global rotation using the lerp angle method that we used before. Now, that being said, be aware that someone did bring up that using quaternions would resolve this and lerping between quaternions. I had a bit of issue implementing that just because quaternions are sometimes a little bit black magic. I'm going to have to investigate that and just get better at it. It is genuinely just a faulting on my part. But we go ahead and lerp it exactly like we did with the torso. And then we can go ahead and set the interpolation value of the head IK solver based off of how much we're looking at the target. So we're going to be using the forward axis of the chest target container. And we're going to use the dot product of that and the vector that we're actually looking at plus one divided by two. This remaps it from negative one to one to zero to one. And that way we can go ahead and change the interpolation value of the head IK solver with one being that it will be exactly where the IK is and zero being that it's exactly what the animation is. This makes it so that if you get in front of the AI, the AI will look at you. But if you get behind it, the AI will put its head back down. And last but not least, I do need to make one little change down here in the hit normal. Realized I was passing it vector three dot up still, but we do need to go ahead and use that chest target container. So we're going to go ahead and save that and we're going to go ahead and build that and let's see how that looks. So over here in the limb placement controller, we are going to have to set a couple variables. So first off, we got to set the head IK solver as well as the head target container. We need to make sure the head IK is set to the head target. And for the head rotation lerp speed, let's set something like two and let's see how that looks in game. Now, as you can see, the AI are now looking at us very creepily, which is the intended result. And I think that looks pretty good. Now let's see if we can get those hands working a little bit better. Right now they're not really placed very well and also they have a bad habit of bending in the wrong direction. So let's go ahead and wrap those up. So first off, we're gonna add a couple things to the Bezier curve. We're going to add a target hit normal as well as an origin hit normal. And this is just going to be used to actually rotate the hands based off of the ground that we're standing on. 
So we're going to go ahead and create a couple exports for the target point offset minimum distance and the control point offset minimum distance. This is just going to be offsetting away from the center of body, the control points as well as the target point respectively, with the target point being where the hand actually is. That way we don't ever get too, too close to the torso. We do want to bump it out a little bit. And then the control point is just going to make it so that when we're walking fairly slowly, the arcs will actually bend outwards as opposed to going in a straight line towards the direction the character is running. It gives it a little bit more of a fluid motion. Now down here in the physics process, I'm going to change how the current target location is calculated. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and create a new function. We're just going to put that down here at the bottom. And that's going to be called adjust target point. And it's going to take a vector three and return a vector three. So we can go ahead and just pass it the results of this function and set the current target location to the return value of the function. So if we hop down here, we can go ahead and get started here. So first off, we're going to get the offsetted world body position, which is just going to be the target point. That's the point we're moving the hand to in the local space of the chest target container. Then we're going to check to see if it's on the left side of the body or if it's on the right side of the body using the left hand left foot references or the other if it's the other. And if so, we're going to set the offset to position in local space X to the minimum of the original X and the negative target point offset minimum distance. This just means that if the X in the local space of the chest target container is less than it should be, as in it is too close to the torso, then we're going to go ahead and bump that out. And that's just going to keep the hand from getting too close to the body's center mass or crossing over and being on the wrong side. And then we can go ahead and do the opposite, which is checking the max between the value and the positive of target point offset minimum distance. And this is going to make sure that it's always out to the right of the torso. And then lastly, we're just going to set the target point equal to the controller chest target container dot two global of that. So we're going to convert it back from local space back into global space, and we're going to return that target. point. So that'll go ahead and handle the target points offset. And next up, we're going to go ahead and work on the set IK targets. So a minor little error here that I didn't catch in the last video the magnet is actually in world space and it needs to be in local space for the skeleton one of the guys in discord actually helped me out with that one so i was able to get it sorted and now it works properly that was just making the legs bend in the wrong way when you got too far away from the origin point so that should work just fine now down here below the look at position we're going to do something a little bit different in order to factor in the normal of where the hand is placed on the ground we do need to go ahead and catch that so first off we're going to check to see if we're currently traveling and if we are then we're going to go ahead and get a lure value between the origin normal and the target hit normal based off of the current lerp value. That way it will rotate smoothly from the original rotation to the target rotation. And if we're not currently moving, we can go ahead and just use the target hit normal. Now we're going to get the difference between the look at direction and that. And we're going to be using that in the look at function down here. So if we just erase everything right there for the up vector of the look at function, we're going to check to see if the current difference is greater than 0.99, which means it's directly up or down in relation to the normal vector, or if the normal vector is zero prox. I ran into this specifically when the AI was in the air and it didn't have any frame of reference. And so this just checks to see if that is the case. And if so, we're just going to go ahead and use the back vector on the chest torso. But if it's not, we're going to go ahead and use the normal vector. And that should handle that. Now down here in an initialize step, we're going to change this up a little bit. So we're going to put an if statement inside of here. And basically all this is going to do is say that when we're actually wanting to apply force to the body, if it's the feet, then we want to go ahead and use the vector from the target location towards the torso. And that means that we're pushing off from the ground with that velocity vector. And then we're going to lerp it normally with the enemy body desired velocity bias. But if it's the hands, then we're going to do the opposite where we're pulling away from the AI. So we're going to use the vector from the torso towards the target location of the limb. That way we pull towards where the hand is placed on the ground as opposed to kicking away from where the foot is on the ground. This just means that the AI generally will continue to move forward when applying that bit of a randomness value to the actual kicks. Now down here on get new curve, we're going to update this to actually change the current target location. I realized that the too far from target might occur multiple times in a row if the AI never actually catches up with the limb because the limb does take time to move towards the target location. So for too far away, I just go ahead and hard limit it to wherever the skeleton's hand currently physically is. Now we do need to go ahead and keep track of the hit surface normal. So we've got the current curve dot target hit normal and the hit normal down here. And if you remember in limb placement controller, we actually updated how we're getting that hit normal. So we always have a good value now. Now I do want to go ahead and make some modifications to this Bezier curve. Much like I adjusted the target point, we're going to adjust the control points. So let's go ahead and create a new function for that. And we're just going to call it adjust control points. And we're going to take in a Bezier curve. So we can go ahead and put this right here where it's taking in the new Bezier curve we're creating. And it returns a Bezier curve 
curve so we can just edit it right in there and it'll go ahead and export exactly like it used to now first off let's go ahead and get in our return so that that way we're returning the curve that we're receiving but we're going to make some modifications to it so first off we're going to do much like we did with the adjust target position we're going to get an offset world body position and we're going to default it to the enemy body global position then we're going to set that y-axis on that vector to the y-axis of the target location control this just gets it on the same plane of the target location control and we're going to check two different things so first off we're going to say if the target control dot distance to offsetted world body position if it's less than the control point offset minimum distance then we're going to go ahead and set the target location control to the offsetted world body position plus the vector towards the original target location control normalized and multiplied by the target point offset minimum distance and all that's going to do is make sure that the target location control is always a minimum distance away from the torso and this is going to mean that when a curve gets too close to the AI the controls will be pushed away from the AI and as a result the curve will move away from the AI so you'll have the same origin and target location but the hand instead of arcing straight up and down will arc away from the torso now we do need to do something similar for the origin control but we're going to do it a little bit different so first off we're going to check to see if the hit surface is true and if that's the case then we're going to take the original origin location and we're going to add to it the vector between the target location control and the origin location and if we normalize it and multiply it by the control point offset this means that our new origin control point will be down and behind and as a result when the arms are following that curve they will actually push back and down before moving forward and the reason for this is we want to go ahead and have that kickoff when we're actually applying force and the only time we have hit surface equal true when we're adjusting the control points is when we are applying force so that that way it has a little bit more punch to the limbs but if it's not true, we can do almost the exact same thing as we did up here, where if it's too close to the torso, we go ahead and push it out, and it's the exact same math. And then we can go ahead and just return new curve. So let's go ahead and hop back in. We're going to go over to level one scene, and we're going to delete all of these except for one, and we're going to remove its player target so that that way it just kind of mills about. This will give us a good reference for when it's moving slowly, because when they're moving slowly, their hands don't move very far, and this function will kick in quite a lot. So let's go ahead and build that, make sure we get our variable set. All right, so in the limb placement, controller I did go ahead and bump up the jump velocity as well as the step bounce velocity and the head rotation lerp speed is just set to two this results in a little bit more bouncy movement though I did go ahead and set the gravity scale on the ro roller ball up to 1.2 I may actually increase it more later on this just makes sure that they don't seem too floaty so down here in the arms we're going to go ahead and set the target point offset to 0.3 and the control point we can leave at 1.5 the legs we did the same but we went ahead and set the target offset a little bit more this means that the legs are going to swing a little bit wider when moving through the torso and that's just because the thighs were collapsing up upon themselves and we can go ahead and save that make sure the ik is set and we should be able to hit play and see what it looks like so the red ones here are when the ai is pushing off and then the blue ones are when it is just readjusting now this isn't perfectly ideal we're going to be working on this a fair bit as we go on but for now this will work just fine all right, and that was looking pretty good, but there's still one more change we can do. We can go ahead and change the applied force. Instead of just using this additive force, we're going to subtract it from the linear velocity and use that. And all this is going to do is get the difference between the linear velocity and this desired force. This way, the force will be much sharper in its application. So if we go ahead and hit play, we should see a little bit of a difference in how it moves around in the world. As you can see, it's a little bit more harsh in its movements, but it's also a little bit more consistent in its speed. And if we shoot it, it still bounces away, but not quite as hard because it's able to arrest its movement a bit more effectively. And we can go ahead and use that for the time being. That's going to result in a bit more of a an accurate movement of the creature. It's going to look a little bit more natural. You can also bump up that speed a little bit. All right. And as you can see, it now moves around a little bit more mechanically, a little bit more sharply which makes it look more like the arms and legs are actually doing the work. So this would be a good place to leave it for now. We're going to come back to this, like I said, but for now, we're going to leave this, and then next week, we're going to work on other things. But as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.